Amalgamation, featuring Monroe Cranford, AIFD, and Darla Pollack, AIFD. Sponsored by AIFD Platinum Elite Partner, Teleflora. Good morning and welcome to Amalgamation. You know, inspiration for floral designers comes in many forms and travels down many avenues. But as florists, we just need to pick, uh, figure out which avenue or which road we're going to travel down. And for us, at, when they ask us to do this program, they ask us to do, uh, the challenge was to do fresh and permanents together, which is a little bit of a contradiction sometimes, maybe. But with transformation and transition, we thought this was a perfect um, opportunity to challenge ourselves. And so we wanted to, the road we chose to take in this journey was to try to do silks and permanents that would be used for commercial or maybe um, contract work that we could actually take permanent materials and use them with fresh application. When, when Darla called me and we began to go over this, and we began to work throughout the year trying to develop the program. We wanted to come up with a way that we could actually do this that people would understand and really appreciate. Darla and I have always used uh, permanents within our designs throughout the years in both wedding work, event work, things of that sort in small ways. But we wanted to bring it to the stage in a way that everyone would appreciate it. And I've grown even a stronger appreciating, having, appreciation having gone through this throughout the year. We've made some wonderful artistic structures as well as architectural pieces, and we're so excited to be here today to present this to you. Yes, and one of the other things that we really wanted to um, portray in our whole program was education. We have a passion, both Monroe and I both have a passion for education, and so we really wanted to um, educate and we wanted it to m be more about the how and not necessarily all of the wow, which we hope you get a little wow too, but it's more about the how for us. And so education is extremely important, and so we couldn't have a better underwriter for us than Teleflora because they are committed to education just like we are. And on a personal note, Rich, I just have to say I'm so thankful to be a, um, have the opportunities that Teleflora has provided me as an education specialist, so thank you. So um, that's our goal, thank you. Go ahead. And uh, so we just wanted to say that again, that for us, amalgamation is just the, uh, the synthesis of joining uh, uh, permanence with fresh flowers. So we hope you enjoy it. We've divided our program today into three segments, the first being reformist, and the second being enlightened, and the third being industrious. We're going to kind of go through each one of these and kind of give you some applications on these and an appreciation of each one of those. Let's go ahead and go to okay. reformist first this morning. This is our first piece, and we kind of played around with what we were going to call it, but we decided to call it the vortex. And this was actually the construction or the concept of this was we wanted to do this whole series in, um, in Reformist is all about taking materials and reforming them into something else or repurposing as we know that that's a big trend right now. So we wanted to take something that we had already and try to do something new with it. These were actually um, uh, urns or baskets that we had in the garden. Uh, they're on metal stands. Um, originally they were on metal stands. 
And they were really rusted and very dirty, and actually they were, you know, we weren't really using them. So we decided we were gonna do something with this. So we just, we um, acquired some materials to wrap around there. We manipulated them into a little bit of a different form. And then we just started adding materials to it and giving, giving it some more texture and some more grace to the lines. And go ahead. With this piece here, what we did, the original form was just simply a cylinder that was created out of a wicker aspect. We wanted to really give it a unique organic feel, almost like mushrooms or twisters or vortexes, as she's mentioned. We then created the wideness of creating with the wire, bringing it up and then formulating it out to a nicer, wider ba base at the top. We wrapped the whole piece in this nice wool. I don't know if y'all have used this before. Uh, it's a wonderful product. Then we began to base on with the um, lichen and with the mood moss, the, the reindeer moss, and also along with the little sponge mushrooms. One of the other things that we did to enhance it or to make it larger for stage is we put um, poultry wire around it to um, raise, elevate the size of it so that we could actually extend it. They were not quite this tall to begin with. In this piece, you will notice we have actually mixed. This is our first mixing that we'll begin to talk about. We started out with the permanent designs within this. We like, when we're working with permanent designs, Darla and I always make a, a point to begin to use different things. And we've used preserved pieces within this, using the artichokes, as well as the, uh, the small little succulents as well. And also with the rose hips, brings on a strong color. There's, there's such beautiful product out there to work with today. And even giving it slight motion by bringing in the, light, the wide flax. And then we've also used the, the nice grasses that are, that are actually, that we had a few new colors out in those. This is a nice mocha tone in this one. And we've branched and united the pieces across by using a branch that we've salvaged. One of the things I think you need to um, uh, adhere to if you're using um, permanent materials is that you want to try to buy the best product that you can buy so that when you buy, when you actually make this piece, that it actually looks real. If you actually look up here, it's probably pretty hard to tell what is fresh and what is not. I'm gonna tell you right now, the two center ones are um, artificial or permanents, and uh, the two side ones are fresh. And it's really hard to tell because the quality of our silks are um, extremely important. And when I started working, as Monroe said, we are um, heavily based in home decor, but when I started working in home decor and started working with permanent materials, I was told at that time to do any, whatever I did by the best that I could because this is gonna be something that's gonna be in someone's home. So to go to um, some of the discount stores and try to buy silks, you really don't have anything to compete. I mean, if you're gonna just compete with um, you know, lower end market, then um, it's gonna be really hard to elevate your design styles into something that's more artistic and has some more value to it. Another thing I'd like to point out on this one, this would be great for like an entrance of a lobby or also could be used like in a wedding reception. It, it actually, it, this whole base is actually done on wheels. So it's very movable. We actually placed all of these into and secured them by doing some framing points within them. And then we wrapped the whole thing and actually just, these are cedar fence planks that we've actually used on that portion of it. And I think for this today, this is Vortex. Vortex. Thank you. Many of the things we did today, we really actually tried to make our props and our containers by hand also. We've tried to make them out of either organic or manufactured materials. And this one actually, uh, these are obviously repurposed materials, but they are manufactured. So these are manufactured pieces that we were able to secure for the program. But we really wanted to do as We've kind of said um, a lot of our pieces, we wanted them to really look like art pieces. We really wanted to elevate the level of what a, a permanent piece is. A lot of times people don't uh, put a lot of value on permanents, but we really wanted to be able to show you that permanents can be art pieces and they can be displayed as art pieces. And so that's been our real challenge and our real goal for this. And so again, just by placing these, what we're kind of called them as pinwheels, sorry Sandy if that's not their name, um, 
and we placed them so that they would have a more artistic feel and a more architecturally structured feel. Yeah, we kind of worked with this as we began to see these pieces. We, we knew we found interest in them from, and found them very intriguing. So when we got them in, we began to move them around and we found that we really loved the natural lay of them. How we just placed them so we saw each one in a different direction. So that each time you went around this arrangement, you could get a different interest within it. With the piece here, you'll see that we've actually pulled the permanence within this piece here using the nice aloe, uh, pulling into the nice um, the little lotus pods, and then also with down and deep, we've also, again, we've added those nice uh, flat tone textures along with the preserved um, artichokes down in the base of it. And then to bring out some nice length, we brought in the wonderful anthuriums. We, they have been slightly in color enhanced. Also, keep in mind when you get in silks you may, or permanents, you may find yourself not liking the hue or the tone in it. There's wonderful uh, dye textures out there that we can add to those to make them more appreciative when seeing those pieces. And we also, as um, we were developing these, we really wanted these to be pieces that could stand alone without fresh, or if it's in a contract work, you would purchase, or the, you would contract out the fresh to be changed on a weekly, monthly, or however much basis. But we wanted that to be the part that you would actually keep continuing your revenue in, where they would buy the piece, and then they would just add the fresh to it. So now we're just gonna add some fresh to this piece. Thank you, Casey. So we're just going to take a small hand tie, this has a base, and we're just going to put this in here. And this is the part where they can actually come in and add their own fresh to a piece. Thank you. And so, that, so this is a great concept because this is not where the buck stops. I mean, you can still keep bringing in revenue on a weekly basis, which I think is amazing. So. Also, I will mention on this, we're, we're big on mechanics. We love to explain how we did this stuff. Yeah. We actually, uh, in order to, keep, to create a stronger structure in these, we've actually uh, screwed oh. these actually to the column that we have here. And we love the fact that the colorations was brought down along with the column bringing up onto the pinwheels. Thank you. This mess piece coming to us today uh, we like the idea of bringing in local artistry when we are doing some pieces. On the next piece is a commission piece that Darla and I commissioned these pieces. The, uh, this is a first for the uh, artist that did these. She usually does the very freeform pieces, but she had never done them with the holes that we've placed into these today. Yes, and we, you know, we, we kind of follow, kind of studied trends and what was going on in trends, and I believe that, you know, when you're doing work um, for home decor, you really need to study home decor. But we we saw the trend of um, buying locally, and so that's what that was the inspiration to have these made locally. These were a local artist that made these, so we really wanted to do something that was done locally. Um, because, um, and when he gets in here to see this, I'm not sure if you can see the inside of it yet, but the detail of these. Uh, gorgeous bowls was so intricate that we really didn't want to, ch to hide that. So our challenge was to how to make or design this without taking away from it. I've always been taught that um, once you make a statement, don't keep repeating it and don't hide it. So we wanted to make a statement with the bowl and then it was all about just how we accessorized it and how we enhanced the beauty of the bowl itself. Um, originally, we were going to do um, a, a dried branch that we were going to send to the artist so that she could actually develop the bowl uh, um, around the, um, the branch and make the holes around it. And then we found these wonderful branches that actually um, are very flexible. They're um, permanent branches, but they are flexible branches, so we could bend those through the actual insert, insert them into the holes. Yeah, they're wonderful pliable materials. And on this, we knew that we wanted to keep it simple. We didn't want to take away from it. So we created this nice, thin, linear garland that we've actually manipulated through this piece. The base of this is simply a cord covered in moss. And on that, we wired on the lichen. We brought in the reindeer moss. And then across the top of that, to give it even more that softening effect, uh, we were in the back room and we were looking for something really fine to go across the top, top of it. And I went and I asked uh, one of the other designers in the room, I said, do you have any of that smile axe that the, that the leaves were wilting? He's like, yeah, but what are you going to use that for? I'm like, we want just the vine. There's not much vine there. Well, I love the detail of the fine, intricate vine lying across through the piece. And then we've added on just the very delicate Glorioso lilies. We've wired them so we can give some extensions to them. 
and we've actually curled on that to give the real strength so they hold into place. And we really wanted them to kind of look like butterflies dancing across the design. So this would be, of course, your fresh um, application if you were going to uh, sell these as a, uh, a permanent piece and then just add your fresh, fresh application on a monthly or weekly basis, however it is that, um, however convincing you are to, as a salesperson. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and originally, we, she, the, the artist had actually done four of these for us to choose from. Uh, when we actually saw them, we insisted on having both, and we felt that it was just wonderful to give both onto the stage today. This is our local artistry. The next piece we're calling Circle of Life, and you know how sometimes when you, um, you uh, birth things, you just have to name them, and so we, we have kind of named every one of our arrangements, which is, I know is crazy, but well, um, you know they're kind of like our children. <laughs> So, um, so this we called Circle of Life, and the actual um, mechanics of this was uh, we were we started out trying. Let's put it this way: you know, sometimes you start um, a concept and it just doesn't happen, and you just go to Plan B. Well, that's what we had to do here, and this is what we did do, of which sometimes it is, is even so much better. But we started out wanting to make a crescent and have um, something come out in a in a really nice crescent. And we just couldn't figure out how to get it going the way we wanted to. And so um, then I, I think actually, Monroe, you were in your garden and, and he saw a garden edging and thought this would be the perfect thing to make in a circle. And so then we just started enhancing it with all the gorgeous textures and um, in the bark and, the, uh, you know, bringing in some of the mushrooms in the side. And why don't you talk a little bit about how we um, uh, thickened that outside wall so that we could oh, give yes. it a little bit more depth. I will. On, on this here, the actual garden edging, I used two pieces of it. Trying to find something circular was very difficult uh, when going to the hardware store. So I took two pieces of it, wrapped it together with duct tape, and then on top of that, in order to get the product to adhere to it, I wrapped it again with um, the burlap uh, ribbon. As we actually worked and then we, we built up the, the nice birch pieces around the top of it, we actually wanted to have a nice layering, so we worked out in small squares to the side, giving nice thickness to one side, and then we actually lined the interior of it with the wool, and then coming down through the center of it with the cascading sponge mushrooms. And again, um, this piece we, we brought out completed, but when it before we put the uh, fresh product in it, which these are fresh, and of course the gorgeous amaryllis are fresh, but it actually looked like a great sculptural art piece all by itself without having to put any fresh in there. So again, the application is what you can add to it, but it still remains as a great piece without any application to it. And we wanted something linear in the back. These are actually permanents in the back, so we've actually placed these. We drilled the, the holes into the base of this piece, and we actually placed them so that they actually held a nice vertical form to them. And then we pulled the permanent vine down through the front, creating a nice cascading, almost a waterfall feel. Mm -hmm. And then we've actually added on the nice, um, the cactus to place within our flower so we can actually add into the amaryllis to have that nice, really fresh feel. It's a fantastic piece that could actually be transformed, changed out. Uh, it's a very universal piece. So this is our last piece in um, Reformist. Again, it's all about taking materials and reforming them into um, works of art. Thank you. Our next set is Enlightened. And Enlightened is all about um, taking away color. Um, it's almost like uh, muting down all the colors so that all the gorgeous textures show up. And so we really wanted to do this with an absence of color. And um, so the genesis of this uh, vase right here is that I, I wanted to take a skeleton, um, of, uh, I had it made as a skeleton of um, a steel. And they made the steel and then I wrapped it with, or we wrapped it with um, chicken wire or poultry wire, if you want to be politically correct. We did poultry wire, and then I, we just started uh, weaving the metalino through it so that I could actually, we could actually make um, our own container. And if you're wondering, it's about um, 1,750, I think Kelly said, feet. <laughs> 
So it was a little bit laborious, I understand. And just, but, to, um, and just yeah. to be honest, I didn't weave this thing. She <laughs> wove it. it I, I have more patience. I don't have the patience to weave a basket. So, um, so yeah, this, these were labors of love, believe me. But um, I just wanted, I really wanted to be able to, I've never uh, woven something like this before. I had no idea. Somebody came over and said, where did, how did you know where to start? And I'm like, I didn't. I just started, and then I was then I then I was committed. So I had to make it. So, um, but I wanted to do something that was um, very artistic in its own right. You don't you wouldn't even have to put uh, flowers in it. It looks great without it. But um, and then the t the top part, which actually comes off, is um, a steel a sheeting, and then um, we just uh, glued the uh, the birch to it. And then I just wanted to do so a little bit more texture because, as I said, in the absence of color, texture really dominates. So you really want to show a lot of texture. And again, um, we, when we came in to do the silk, we did the whole um, permanent arrangement before we ever put in this. Uh, the, the fresh uh, anthurium are just put in in a little uh, container on the side so they can be popped out. And this could be sold as just a, um, a permanent piece also. Why don't you talk a little bit more about the detail? Well, one of the things I'd like to talk about on this, on this piece here, we actually had to come and back cut it, taking off the thicker part of the yes. birch in order to peel it back on the edges. And then she's just actually adhered these with um, probably... You glue. You glue is what she used on the pop to, to adhere these. Now, also, we wanted to make sure that we gave it lots of, of... We brought the texture from the piece up into the arrangement as well, uh, bringing in the, the dried cactus, and then also bringing in the, the nice uh, taupe tones within the grasses. And this piece is a 360. All of our pieces are just as beautiful from all directions. We actually have wonderful manzanita coming off the back side of this. And then this is actually fresh flax. And then we've mixed it with the permanent flax up into the top. But you really can get an appreciation when you look at this, you wouldn't question what is permanent and what is actually fresh within this piece. And I think it's a really good execution of what we're trying to get across today. And one of the other things, um, and both, you know, it was really funny in the back room when Monroe and I were designing, he, we, I would start something and he would walk away, or I would walk away and he would finish it. And then he would start something and get distracted and I would finish it. And our styles um, blend so well together. I mean, even our styles are a great amalgamation. But um, one of the things I wanted to say about this is when you're doing um, any type of a design and it has a lot of detail and a lot of texture, it's so, so important to be very, very clean with the design. If, you're, if your vessel is important, then your design needs to be clean. If your if your design is important, then your vessel you know your vessel is uh, different. You know it's opposite. So you just want to make sure that you tell your story very cleanly because if this if we spotted dotted this and and made a roundy moundy tuzzy muzzy huggable hump or whatever you want to call it, if we did that. <laughs> If we did that, we would just have ruined the whole container and the whole idea of what we did. So it was really important for us to keep the texture going, keep the story clean, and keep it as, um, as, as um, textural and grouped as possible so that we could tell a clean story. With, with this, we'd just like to show you a possibility of, like if this was your centerpiece as you was walking into an event, this would be a great option to come in. This is actually one of the wreath forms that many of us have seen throughout the years. And we've just actually taken and woven um, the nice flat cane throughout it. And it works quite well up on the top of the bowl. You could place something down in the bowl or you could set something on top of it as well, just to show you a downscaled version of this particular And piece. one of the other reasons we did this um, was because, you know, I mean, let's get real. Maybe, some, you know, maybe not all of you have um, areas in your, your town or your area that, um, or, or opportunities, I should say, that you can actually sell something like this. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. But you can take the same technique of weaving and you can take it down to a smaller scale and you can do something like this for a, an event or a tabletop or something else. So you don't necessarily, if you can't do, if you don't have the opportunity to do this, you can take the concept and do something else with it. Our next piece we're going to be bringing out here, uh, it's, it's, again, it's another weaving technique. It's actually done, oh, we're going to go to the back first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we changed things around a bit. This, <laughs> this um, thank you. This piece actually um, e uh, evolved from um, writing the wrong skew on my product order. <laughs> 
And I had asked for 400 little pieces of this, and I got this. And I thought, uh oh, I better do something with this, so we better come up with something. And so uh, my whole idea and the whole concept of this was that it was to be a floating wall. And then after we made it, we realized we couldn't hang anything from the ceiling like we were able to in many of the other venues that we've been to. So we decided that we were going to make it uh, mobile as far as putting it on wheels. But this was really um, the, the genesis, the evolution of this was actually supposed to be a floating wall. And why don't you talk a little bit about it and we can talk about some construction. On, on the construction aspect of this, it's, it's two, a, a plywood top and a plywood base. We actually wanted to give it depth and volume. So we actually rippled it when we was creating this piece. It actually works so well to be as a floating piece or it could be a stationary piece for a backdrop if you were doing an event. It could be a great petition piece or a divider piece within a hotel lobby. And then we've actually taken the birch and just layered le levels of it on. And on the, on the final one, we actually pulled some nice curvature across through the exterior of it just to give it a little more depth, a little more. I love seeing the actual holes within this. You can actually add designs within those so you can see it from a side angle as well. And then this is a total mobile piece as well. On the, the fresh on the and construction, silk part. Um, when, we, when I, we decided to do this, I drew out a, a pattern. It's kind of almost like a kidney, but it has a little bit more. I didn't want it to be stagnant or st uh, static either as far as making it straight. So we put a little bit of a, um, a, a, a curve into it. And then um, after we did the top and the bottom, then we just put Luan around it, a uh, stapled Luan around it. And then that was the um, material that we were able to then go back and staple all of our birch to it. And go ahead. Uh, on, the, on the top, you'll notice that we've actually blended again. We blended our permanents as well as our fresh. Uh, the, uh, the wonderful, we used the dries in here into the base of this. We used in wonderful lotus pods to bring out, we brought in those really nice deeper hues to, tr to bring out the, the lighter tones as we brought them to the outer edges. Uh, the Talenzia is just fantastic. Look, they were within just feet of this back in the design room, and they were just, they thought they were the fresh ones. Price point's much cheaper on that point of it. And then we've actually brought the height up with bringing up this, the, the permanent equisetum as well. And in our fresh, Aramaris. we've actually brought in the Aramaris as our fresh aspects of it. We wanted to give a division because we wanted to actually have a nice lull within the center instead of it being be really busy across the entire top of it. We wanted to give a nice rest spot for your, for your eye to take. And then we've used these wonderful little orbs, again, to just to build in some wonderful texture down into the base of it. Is there a chance that we could get the house lights down real quick or not? Not the house lights. I'm sorry, the stage lights. Stage I lights. get this wrong every time. <laughs> what, we'd like, what we'd like Stage to... lights? Can we get those down? There Thank we you. Go. We just wanted to show you that we also underlit this. We have some ambient lighting under this. Our goal was to kind of make this as a, as a, a piece that would have some glow. And we all know that lighting um, it has nothing to do with lighting. It has everything to do with mood. And so when you do any kind of ambient lighting, it just adds a little bit more um, of a wow factor to something. So these, this is all underlit with um, lighting. Thank you. You can take it back up. This is our next piece, which we've actually bring out. It's actually our next weaving technique that we started with on this particular piece. We started with um, an actual metal framework on the base of this mm -hmm. that we then added the poultry wire around the exterior of it. And instead of just weaving the, 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 the metalina straight through, we actually did a curling technique. Mm -hmm. It actually bases back and curls back, almost as if you were crocheting this piece. It has a wonderful texture undertone to it. And on the exterior of it, we've just brought in these fantastic aged pieces. Uh, these are just pieces that was in our collections where we have the driftwood, uh, we have the wonderful vines. It's just, it's fantastic. We actually, a lot of this we had to soak to make it more pliable. And to bring our lighter tone out, having used the darker tones on the exterior of this, we actually brought out the lighter tone to the outer element in order to almost create that depth within the piece. Yes, and if you're wondering, 2,400. Yeah, I know I have a lot of patience. But 
<laughs> but I really had this concept, and I really wanted to be able to make um, our containers, if we, if at all possible. So we we really worked hard on how you know how, trying to figure out how we could do that. Um, I did want to say that these pieces that um, are on here is a tribute to my mother. She's a florist too, and she's um, because of health issues not in the industry anymore. So she was just so proud to be part of part of this program. <laughs> So this is um, a dedication to her. The top part, we, you know, because this was so um, so intricate and so much so much detail on the container itself, we really, you know, we really struggled and wrestled with, you know, what do, how are we going to make the top? And we decided that we just wanted to do um, kind of a, a nice swirl piece and just add, tuck in your silks into this, just so that it could actually be sold as a piece on its own. But then, um, it, you know, we left the center open so we could drop in a vase. I'll take a couple one of the of techniques we used on the permanents uh, on this particular one is we rounded the vines down, pulling them out so that they actually had a nice uh, shadowing effect for the pieces down below, and then went back in and designed in down below. And then we actually pulled in uh, the nice rose hips down to the base, and now we're just adding in some nice volume, pulling it out to the exterior edges with the nice uh, Saracenas and um, Glorioso. Gloriosos, Glorioso <laughs> lilies. Really felt like we needed to add the lightness of this Gloriosa because we had such a, a, a beautiful mound of um, amaryllis here that we now needed to pop this out and make it all airy, give it some lightness. And this finishes out enlightened. Our last set and final set is called Industrious. And we really wanted to be able to take, um, you know, the other pieces are extremely organic and architectural, but we really wanted to get even more um, industrial with it. We wanted to get harsher. We wanted to take that organic material and, and and marry it with um, harder products and, uh, and uh, products that had a little bit more substance to them. So uh, Industrious is all about marrying industry with nature for us. Both Monroe and I are both very natural in our design, but we're also very structured and we love architecture. So you can kind of see that in all of our designs. We work kind of very closely as far as our work together. This particular piece that we've done today, very versatile piece. Even with it just being without the boxes that the, our assistants are now adding, we have the wonderful shadow boxes. It's very versatile. These are easily placed within. They have nice little hooks on the back. This piece actually splits down the center for transport and flips onto its sides. Very transportable, very um, multifunctional piece. And then we've actually mixed and blended within the um, let me pull this right up here. We've blended within this the products of being the permanent, as you see in the boxes, giving us the, ni the nice length on those. And as you can tell, we had these numbered somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but this was greatly rehearsed. But, but you know how it happens when you actually put them out. It makes it. Yeah, there we go. But the nice part about this, and, um, and I think the selling point of this, if the cameraman, if, I'm sorry if you can't see over there, but um, is the fact that these are on L brackets. Every one of these boxes are on L brackets, so you can actually move them or, or, or change them around any way you wanted. Originally, we had them all coming up. Then we, once we got here, we thought we changed the L brackets because we really felt like some of the materials had needed to come down and some of them needed to be just straight on. So we really played around with this and had a lot of fun um, building this vertical wall. On the pieces that we're putting out now, you'll see that we based in to give us some nice white tones to help the other flowers pop. Uh, we based this out with white carnations. Uh, then we brought out the nice Phalaenopsis orchids to get cascading out. We loved the movement of this piece. Uh, we, we enjoyed it as we continued on with this. It's just, we just realized how versatile the piece was. People were really drawn to this as we was uh, bringing this together and developing it in, in, in the back space. And um, the, the, the shadow boxes, 
I, I was realizing when I would do this, we could actually do this in a more of a modern setting if you wanted to do a Chris, repetition, right maybe pulling the candles across the top, yeah. doing them in, in very much symmetric yes. space. You could do the boxes really clean in your design, or you could actually, okay. um, actually bring them more into a garden feel like we're doing here today. Ooh, but we enjoyed really the good. fact that these are so versatile. You can pull them forward, designing out of the front of the boxes. You know what, just we can design back. from the base of the boxes, or we can also pull in here and let me put this right up here. And design actually coming out of the top of the boxes as you would just think of in most of our design skills today. Isn't this great? We really, we really wanted it to have that warehouse feel and we wanted it to, you know, it could work for patio, it could work for interiors, as, as Monroe probably said, it works as a backdrop. And so we really wanted it to kind of look like a living wall, um, you know, separate, or having the fresh and the silk with it and not really even being able to tell which is which. The um, fresh, were, um, we built the boxes so that they actually fit in perfectly with uh, raquettes. So it, they're easily drop-ins and, and taken out. And, and this today is our vertical skate. In Reformus, we really wanted to take, um, we, we've had very warm colors in here, and we really wanted to choose cool colors for this um, last set. And so that's why we have more grade materials. And our accent colors were just lavenders um, and uh, a little bit of uh, purple, but mostly just lavenders and whites. This piece here, we... Isn't this fabulous? You know, sometimes you just do stuff and you really like it. It's okay. <laughs> we, we really enjoyed this piece here. Uh, we actually, again, uh, we... It's going in my garden. We, <laughs> we hired a local craftsman to do the structure of this piece. It, again, it's a very versatile piece. Uh, actually, actually, as you turn it, you get a great sense of it. If those, I know it's different angles, but you actually, I love the fact that you can see the wonderful texture we based one side of it with, and then we have the nice light showing through the center, and then on the other side, we've allowed the metal to continue to show. We're gonna add some fresh to this at this time. Just adding One of the nicest uh, things about this is, I mean, this actually could be sold and displayed just as it is. I mean, you don't really even have to add the fresh to this, and that's the beauty of all of the designs, hopefully, that we made, is that they can stand alone on their own without having to be, uh, have fresh added to them. We've actually taken, covered our, two, our water tubes uh, with binding wire, just so we didn't get that glare within this piece, because we enjoyed the wonderful way that the flowers were just showing within themselves. And then we're adding on to the callas onto the top of this. This could it definitely be a nice rentable piece. It has, it has good substance, good base, and they could change it out according to the uh, florals for their particular colorations for their event. And with this, we are just simply twisting these on at the base with a little bit of binding wire. Following our other lines that we've used, these are actually permanent branches that we've used to begin the piece. This is very a mobile piece that we've actually used um, within the center of this. Uh, it's hanging from a small hook up at the top, and we've just began to place the small amounts on here. Uh, the Talenzia is actually one of the, uh, the permanents that we're actually using in, within this today, and the fresh is just within the embellishment that brings out the wonderful. So again, um, as we were talking about using local um, artistry or local talent, we also want to, to just say that sometimes we just, um, this was welded for us. And I just wanted to say sometimes we need to use um, a professional craftsmen and tradesmen also. Just like we want our customers to use professional florists, sometimes we just need to use professional people to help us along too, and there's nothing wrong with that. This piece is called Serenity. Next that piece. was called Serenity, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Some of them we felt stronger that we yeah. felt the name of it. This wonderful garden bowl here, we've started out. It looks great before we actually began to add in any of the fresh elements within this. 
We actually have added in some nice fresh rosemary that we have allowed to dry just to get the nice gray undertone to pull across more of our industrious look within this. This piece here, we have actually have a, a, an orb that we've created within the center of this piece here uh, that actually has a little bit of the metal uh, flaking added to it in order to give it just a little more of the industrial feel. And then the actual base of the bowl, one of the nice intriguing things about this piece is the way that the branches are put into this. The branches are actually put into, um, we actually started with a piece of styrofoam into the base of the pot, and out of that we put in a PVC pipe into the edges of it, so you can actually remove the branches to deliver these pieces, and then we can actually uh, insert them once we get there. Write that down. That is a great tip. I mean, I was so excited about that. Because you know how sometimes when you um, sell pieces or rent pieces with branches and you get there and all of a sudden your driver broke one of them and, and, and you know, they're put in, it's, this is put in uh, blown in insulation, so sometimes you just can't do anything about it once um, it's secured in there. But these are all actually put in the PVC pipe so that you can actually remove them out. When they get brittle, you can take them out and then you can replace them and you haven't hurt the design at all. So each one of those PVCs are on the outside of this container and they can be replace at any time. Is that a great tip? Okay. And then, of course, we wanted to add our fresh to it. And with these beautiful allium that we um, had in the back room, we just wanted to add these to it. We thought they were the perfect complement um, with just a little bit of a, an embellishment of the steel grass. And it really, for an event, it really wouldn't take much to change out the coloration of this. Mm -hmm. You could leave in all the nice greens and gray tones, and simply by changing out the few hydrangeas, you could change the overall look and feel of this piece, and even adding in your nice linear uh, fresh florals into the center. I would like to point out that this is what we were speaking of uh, when we talk about the, um, the actual insertion of the PVC pipe, and actually just the branches, and then inserting them back in. Keep in mind, if you, when you do it on a radius like we've done on the big bowl, I had to actually use duct tape around the outside edges because the, the spray foam will actually push the, up. the tubes upward. So we wanted just to say that, you know, maybe this is not something that you can sell, you know, every day. I mean, this is not always in our um, everyday design existence either, believe me. Um, but, you know, it, it is, you know, we can make it that. But it's not in our everyday design existence. But you can take that and scale it down and do a tabletop for a party or something. So you can take that same concept and uh, do it on a smaller scale. And what did you call this? You, you named this last night. What was it? Garden. What did you name this? Peaceful Garden. Peaceful Garden. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next. The next piece we're bringing out, we've entitled this one, Eyes Wide Open. This piece. Thank you. Thank you. I know. It's, it's gorgeous. This piece was started, we created on the base of this, is actually onto a plywood base, and we've used and drive it on the upper aspects of it, done a few layers to drive it. We've actually color enhanced it to to actually mimic the stone. This is an actual purchase face out of Canada, and then we've actually built the piece around this. And the easel. Is this not a great easel? Originally, we were going to put it on um, a, um, rebar, and then we decided that we really wanted it to match our wall, and we really, uh, so we were really challenged on how we could make an easel that would balance itself and look um, a little bit more industrious also. And Eck, I'm going to tell you that Monroe built this, um, and I think you did a fabulous job. I was just so thrilled when I saw it. Thank you. And, and so, I, will, I will tell you it was a big pain. <laughs> The, the base of it was very, it's a struggle. It's, this is the third base I put on it. The first two split on me. Uh, but it was a joy. I mean, when I saw this piece coming together and we began to really work together and develop what we was going to do with this overall structure of this, we were just so excited when this piece came out. In the construction of this, we actually um, took uh, poultry wire and uh, took a piece of styrofoam in the center of it, wrapped it with poultry wire, and we shoved it down um, because the, the face has about a 14-inch um, um, opening here that um, it just kind of naturally arched out. And so we shoved it down in there. And then all of these materials, uh, whether they be the silk 
or the fresh have just really been placed in and then after we got all of the placement, which um, if any of you were in the design room with us, um, you know, both of us when we were working on projects were both on ladders and he would put one insertion in and I would put the other one in and he'd put one in and, and we really wanted this to be about, every design to be about both of us, not just his or hers and we hope that you can um, see that because I think that happened very seamlessly for us, thankfully. But um, so then after we were all done, then we went ahead and just put the fresh in um, in water vial. So again, this is a great piece on its own. It's a standalone piece on its own. And then the fresh can just be added into it. The color combinations, I think, um, as this one is called Peaceful Garden, I think the colors are very serene and very subdued. And it makes um, the the element pop more. It makes the, the, the focal point pop more because we've kept very controlled in our colors and very controlled in what we used as far as accent pieces. We're going to bring out our finale piece now. Maybe um, we can have the, house, or the stage lights down. we called Mother Earth because we really felt like it looked like she was coming right out of the earth. And the, um, the evolution or genesis of this is I was at an art show and I saw a painting that, I, that was really inspirational to me and I went back and we, tr we conversed and we tried to figure out how we could um, do this or make something that would kind of um, represent the art piece that I had seen. Um, and so I wanted to do something that would do that. The um, hair, if we can turn this around my, before we start, I want to show you this hair. I'm surprised she's touching this. She has scars from this. I, I have battle scars everywhere. This is all uh, poultry wire that has been individually cut, one at a time, row by row. Um, months worth of labor. As I said, I'm a little bit more patient than Monroe, but it has been a labor of love, but I just love, love, love the effect of it. And uh, then I had to take it out. It was very shiny. I had to take it out and age it, and we kind of rusted it. So it's been sitting outside for a couple months just trying to age and rust. But um, I really couldn't figure out how to get that hair to really look like hair without doing this and, and I wanted to keep it more industrial as um, this is industrious. So we needed to have some kind of a metal or some kind of an industrious product to do it with. And we all have chicken wire and we probably have used chicken wire over and over again and how do we use it differently? Sometimes we just need to think, what do we do to make that different? So that's how this uh, started. And we, we've added in nice uh, fresh gaviosa pods within this. We actually, do, uh, this is actually again, uh, it's blown with, with uh, the blown styrofoam in the base of this, which we adhered our permanents into. Then we use water tubes on our scabiosa. Then we use the water tubes on our nice uh, lavender vanda orchids. This piece had to be done, it's very weighty, so we actually attached it to the column and built a caster to bring it out, making it very mobile. So if you were delivering this piece, this caster actually fits on every single column we have. And that's one of those good things to think about when you're building things, how universal and how functional they're going to be in your daily life. The construction of this, um, again, is styrofoam and the head was dropped down into um, sprayed insulation. Thank you. So this 
has been a great journey for us, and we just thank you. We hope you appreciate it. And you know, and for us, this was not just about looking inward, but our outward. It was really looking inward and how we could present something that was a little bit out of our comfort zone, but do art pieces that would be inspirational. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you Teleflora. <laughs> Well, Monroe and Darla, we would definitely like to thank you. You want to come on out? Come on. Come on. What an incredible come on. program. Hurry, 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 hurry. And very inspiring as well. So we have a gift for you both, thank and you. I thank you very much uh, for your work. It's totally incredible and very inspiring to us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gosh, I get all the gifts. I love presents. <laughs> I'll take them all. <laughs> thank you so much. We'd also like to thank the sponsor of this program, Teleflora. Britt Savaggio, AIFD, is here to represent them. Thank you very much. We'd also like to thank another one of our elite sponsors, uh, Floral Design Institute. Leanne and David Kessler are here too today. 